If you're running the image server, then you invariably would have run into this pop-up panel. For good or bad, image is constantly being improved and updates happen pretty frequently. If you want the bug fixes and or new features, then you would need to update your image server. But how do you do it? There is no easy upgrade button that I couldn't find. In this video, we will look at the updating process for image. If you're not seeing these pop-up panels, it could be because you disable them in settings. So click on your name up on the top right hand corner, then administration. On the left hand side, select the settings menu. Then scroll down to version check to see if you have it enabled or disabled. When a new version of image is released, you should read the release notes and account for any breaking changes noted. For example, in order to update image to version 1.137 or above, the application must be started at least once on a version in the range between 1.132 and 1.136. Doing so will complete database schema upgrades that are required for version 1.37. After image has successfully updated to a version in the range, you can now attempt to update to version 1.37. The authors recommend users upgrade to 1.132 since it does not have any other breaking changes. In my demo here, I'm already running version 1.135, so I don't need to do anything special before updating to version 1.137. One thing you should always do before doing any updates is to back up your data. To do that, click on your name on the top right corner, then select Administration. On the left hand side, select the Jobs menu. Then click on Create Job on the top right. And then in the pop-up, click on the drop-down menu and select Create Database Dump. And then Confirm. This will create a backup of the database. As you can see here, there are other dumps which were performed nightly at 2 a.m. This is in the settings under the database dump settings section. So how do you update your version of image? If you use the Proxmox VE helper scripts to do the install, then let's head back to that web page and take a look. The URL is in the description below. If you click on the box over on the right that says links, you will see at the bottom of the list a link to the script update source. Go ahead and click here, and your browser will either display the script to you or download the script. In either case, read through the script to make sure there are no weird code in there that you don't like. Or you can just blindly trust that people who wrote the script are not going to do anything nefarious. Next, we need to get the script to the image LXC so that we can execute it. You can either do a copy of all the document in the web page and then paste it into the image LXC terminal window into a file. So here in the image LXC terminal, I'm going to go ahead and cat or redirect into image cat.shell and then paste it into the shell and then go ahead and save that file. The other thing you can do is you can just copy the link to the script and then you can do a curl to download that file. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the web page. Copy the link, and then go to the terminal window and type curl, and then paste the link. And I'm going to redirect that output into image-curl.sh. Right. Once I hit return, it's going to go ahead and grab the script from GitHub and then put it into the file name image-curl.sh. In either case, we have two files. They should be basically the same content. So I'm going to do a diff of image dash star. And you can see here that they are identical files. Now that we have the update script, we can just run it in the LXC. So what you can do is just do dot slash image dash cat dot sh and hit return. And okay, all right, so this is expected. Uh, I forgot to change the permission for this file to make it executable. So all I have to do is just do chmod plus x dot slash image dash cat dot sh. Hit return, so that's going to give that the executable flag. Then I'm going to up arrow twice, 
and re-execute the script. So the first and only question I'm gonna get uh, is what mode to run the script, right? Whether you wanna in verbose or quiet or quit. I'm gonna go ahead and choose verbose so I can see things progressing. And once I hit return, this is gonna go ahead and run and do whatever it's gonna do. On my system, it took about four minutes to do this update. Your mileage will vary depending on the power of your machine and the speed of your internet connection. One thing I want to highlight is to look at the service status while we are updating. Look at the lower left-hand corner of the web page for the server status and then the version. At some point, the script will stop the server, so we will notice that it will say server offline and then unknown version number. Once the script has finished running, you will see that this is going to turn back to green and it's going to say server online and then give us the version number that it's running. Earlier, we had talked about updating to specific versions so that the database schema can be properly updated. Let's take a look at how we may update to any specific version. What we need to do is edit the update script. So I'm gonna be using VI, but you can use any other text editor you're familiar with like Nano or Emacs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do VI image curlsh And then I'm gonna search for the current release version, which is 1.137.3. And so here it is on this line. And I'm just gonna go ahead and change it from 137.3 to 136.0, um, just to pick any other random version number. And then uh, that's the only occurrence of 137, so that's all we need to change. And I'm going to go ahead and save the file. And now we can run this script by doing dot slash image dash curl dot sh. And once again, keep an eye out for the server status while we are updating. Look at the lower left-hand corner for the server status and version. And when we're done, the script does confirm that we are updating to version 1.36.0. And then once the server is back up, it will also confirm that we are running version 1.136.0 instead of the latest release because we explicitly told it to update to that version. So, although there is no easy button to press to update your image server, it's actually not that bad to have to run the update script by hand. The main thing to note is that you need to read the release notes to make sure that there isn't any major changes between your current version and the latest release. Also, it goes without saying that you should back up your database before doing any updates. For another video that I know you will enjoy, watch this video here. Leave a comment below about your experiences with self-hosting servers. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.